Listen, sometimes the devil roars like a lion, and sometimes the devil sings a lullaby. You heard it, rock-a-bye baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Who wrote this? Who wrote a lullaby that says, and down will come baby cradle and all? What kind of freak? What kind of freak does that? Oh, I know you're comforted. And when you fall out of the tree. But maybe this, I just jotted down what might be his lullaby. Rock-a-bye Christian, lulled by the world. When the wind blows, all hell will unfurl. Stay in your sleep, distracted or scared. So when I wreak havoc, you won't be prepared. And we're just sound asleep. We are called to be mighty women of God. We are called to be mighty women of God. We are called to be mighty women of God. Say it with me. We are called to be mighty women of God. I don't care what you've been through sitting on the other side of that screen. I don't care how frail you've been. I don't care how weak you've been in your natural self. I promise you, we are called to be mighty women of God. I was called to be a mighty woman of God. I was called to be a mighty woman of God. We need women who will pray, who will fast, who will worship, who are tired of waiting on everybody else to do it, who will keep hammering in prayer, hammering and fasting, hammering and saying, you're getting out of my family. You're getting out of my home. I'm not going to let drugs win. I'm not going to let addiction win. I'm not going to let unforgiveness win. I'm not going to let hell tear my family all to pieces through rebellion. It's going over the wall. And I have power and victory in Jesus' name. A woman of God. You have authority, women of God, to get ruthless with devils and demons and say, I will have no sympathy on division in my family and in my home. I can throw you over the wall. And I tell you what Satan is afraid of is women who are not only faithful to God, faithful to their families, faithful to their husbands, faithful to their children, faithful to what God has called them to do, but they're peaceable. They are a peacemaker. They have a peaceable spirit, not a troublemaking spirit. The Word of God tells us in Ephesians 6.10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Be strong in Him and in the strength of His might. There is a, um, a list in 2 Samuel 23 of the mighty men of David. Mighty men of David. Fighters fighters and it chronicles them. It's just nothing but a, a bunch of hard names to say. <laughs> Listen, we want his name. His name alone said here. But I'm going to tell you something. There'll be a chronicle of the war that took place. Oh, there'll be chronicles of the wars that have taken place on the globe when we get to heaven. It's just, I mean, how can, how can there be much of a doubt in our minds that all of this will be on record somewhere? It's why there's a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on because it's our turn right here. And there will be the mighty men and women who were willing in the midst of much fear instead of getting the virus of fear that were willing to stand up on their feet and fight the good fight with a shield of faith in one hand and a sword of the spirit which is the word of God in the other hand. There will be those and you want on that list and so do I because I was called to be a mighty woman of God. I was called to be a mighty woman of God. There is something to be said for an enterprising woman. Somebody who every day when they wake up and before they go to bed, they are thinking about everything that it's going to take to make their life a life of quality. They're not sitting around hoping something good happens today. They made up in their mind, I'm going to make something good happen today. They're not sitting around hoping and wishing and thinking and believing that something's going to drop out of the sky. But there is something down in her that says, I've got to be busy. I've got to be about something. I've got to be building something that I can take pride in and the people around me can take pride in. I know that I'm going to establish something in this earth 
that makes the world a better place. I know how I'm going to be when I get in a marriage. I know how I'm going to be when I run a business. When I get the job, I'll never treat anyone like that. I know how I'm going to do it. I just don't know when I'm ever going to get the job. I know how, but I don't know where, but I'm still preparing like God is going to tell me somewhere along this journey that X marks the spot, that if you keep walking and dragging all of your tools and all of your experiences, somebody needs to be a bag lady in this season. I'm not leaving nothing behind. I'm taking everything with me because when I get to the spot where God tells me to build, I promise you I'm going to build an altar. An enterprising woman, a wise woman builds. She builds. Her hands are busy. She is busy making decisions about her finances and about her family and about her health. She is always bringing things into her life that are building towards something, something that she can take pride in. I'm going to build an altar. I've been collecting things since I was a little girl. I got ideas, I've got plans. I've had a heart for the homeless since the first time I saw one. I've had a heart for ministry since the first time I walked in church. I've had a heart for the industry from the first time I saw a movie. I've had a heart to be married since the first time I saw it. I know how I'm going to do it, I just don't know where. But I have to walk with expectation. As opposed to the foolish one. Spending her time tearing it down. When I first read the scripture, I, I, I them, when I first read the scripture, upon first read, it appeared that this scripture was referring to two different women. Upon first read, it appears that the scripture is talking about two different women. Both of them are enterprising women. Both of them are busy. The difference is that one is busy building, and the other is busy tearing down one is busy bringing positive things into her life to make her lifestyle better the other is spending all of her energy and her effort tearing down the very thing that she takes pride in you'd be surprised the number of women who are spending their time destroying the very things that God has blessed them with through their actions through their attitude with their mouth it doesn't matter how much God blesses them with they are spending all their energy tearing things down I'm going to start working on my heart now I'm going to start getting my mind together now. I'm going to start budgeting now. I'm going to start writing now so that when you say this is the spot, I already have a script to hand over. I'm not waiting on the opportunity. I'm prepared for when the opportunity says you have arrived. That's what I was trying to say. That some of you need to step your preparation game up. You worried about meal prep. What about some spirit prep? What about some purpose prep? What about God? I know what you told me so I'm going to start learning right here I'm going to start gathering right here I'm gathering up my team I'm gathering up my resources I'm gathering up knowledge no one understands it but me but that's because I know what God has called me to do I'm gathering baby I'm gathering every time you give me an opportunity to sit at the table I'm gathering I'm gathering I'm gathering because one day it's going to be me making the decisions is it possible that the same woman could one time at one place be a wise woman who is building, producing, manufacturing, putting things together, but at the same time, on the other hand, be the kind of woman who is tearing down? The word pluck down means that it's not all at one time, but she's pulling it down piece by piece tearing your business apart piece by piece tearing your marriage apart piece by piece destroying the self-esteem of your children piece by piece not something that you do all at one time but 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 little bit by little bit every day little little things that you say and little things that you do and the little things that you ignore and the little negative attitudes the wise woman is building she's building self-esteem she's producing she's either building or establishing or she's rebuilding something she's at one of those three stages but but the foolish woman is tearing it down 
I like the way the NIV translation says, it says that the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish with her own hands tears her down. Notice also that the enemy that is destroying her is not outside of her. It's in her. Is it possible that the greatest enemy to your success is not who you're married to, who you work for, or who you associate with, or who you're related to? Is it possible that the greatest enemy to your success is you? That the greatest enemy to your success may be within you. That there may be something inside of you, some past experience, something you've gone through, some issue from your past, something you've been exposed to that is destroying or threatening to destroy the success that you have. And I come to tell you, ladies, it doesn't matter how much success you have, whether you're building a business or building a home or building a career, it is possible that there is something in you that may be destroying the very success that God has for you. God has no problem giving his daughter success. God has no problem putting things into your hands. God has no issue with making sure that you receive an inheritance. But the issue is, can you handle what God has given you? Somebody in here, God is giving you a good man, but the issue is, can you handle a good man? Somebody in here, somebody is giving you a good family and healthy children, but the issue is, can you be responsible enough to handle good children? For somebody, God has given you an opportunity and a career and blessing you to have a successful business, but the question is, can you handle what God has given you? I breathe the word down in my spirit. God, show me how to see things. God, show me how to walk, how to talk so that I can be prepared. God, you called me into this situation and it looks like chaos and I'm used to order. I'm used to knowing how things are gonna happen. I'm used to knowing how things are gonna plan out. I'm used to depending on people and now I can't depend on anyone at all. It seems like this is a little out of order. I've never seen anyone make it the way that I'm out here trying to get it and yet you still sit me here. God, help me say it the way you gave it to me. God does things that are out of order and out our greatest challenge is breaking what we think is order in order to say, God, not my will, but yours. God, it doesn't look like the way I thought things were going to pan out, but I'm all right being out of order. And if you've ever been in a situation where things weren't in the order that you thought they would be, but then you got on the other side and you see how they were exactly the way they should be, it ought to do something for your faith. The last time I wanted it my way, I would have messed it all up, but you had me lose the job. You made me lose the friendship that seemed out of order, but now I see I couldn't have carried that and gone where you were sending me. It was out of order at the time, but now I see it was in order the entire time. I don't know exactly what I am now, but I know that I used to be something. I used to be bitter. I used to be broken. I used to count myself out, and I don't know who I am right now. I may not be awarded with all of these things, but I know I used to be something else. God wants you to start separating your identity right now. Don't wait for the dream to come true. Don't wait for the people to acknowledge you. Don't wait for the big check. He said, if you would get a used to down in your spirit, then I could get a blank canvas and start laying out dreams and goals for your life. If you would just get a used to, used to, I used to, I used to. I know it seemed like I was just bitter, but I used to be. I used to be, I'm not that way any longer. I can't afford to be that way any longer because what God wants to do in me means I have to separate from who I used to be. I used to, I used to. I used to be the one that wasn't gonna make it. I used to be the one who didn't have integrity. I used to be the one that you couldn't count on. I used to be, I used to be, but I'm not that any longer. And I'm not saying that you have to validate my used to be because I'm so validated down on the inside of me that if nobody else sees it, it's fine because I know what I used to be. And I had to let go of who I used to be so I could become who God called me to be. I used to, I used to.
You've overcome things already in the past. You've already overcome heartbreak. You've already overcome disappointment. You've already overcome job loss and not having enough to make ends meet. You ought to start looking at life and say, I've already survived this thing. I dare you to start prophesying over your mountain that they need to look at the trail of dead bodies behind you. If you look at what my faith has done in the past, I shouldn't even be in this place. I shouldn't even be in this city. I shouldn't even be open to love again. I shouldn't even and be dealing with the things I'm dealing with but because I made it to the other side there are skeletons behind me that remind me of the things I've killed in the past I'm not in this world on my own I know it may look like it I know I may not have the friends that everyone else has I may not have the family that everyone else has but do you know who I am do you know who my father is do you know that he's been with me from the day I took my first breath do you know that he wouldn't get me this far and then turn around and leave me to the wolves do you you know.